JMS Java Messaging Services. In this session, we will learn what JMS is and we will also study how to send and receive messages using JMS API. JMS imparts communication between two software components. In all types of communications like email or telephony, you always find one human being present either on the sender side or on the receiver side. So if it is an email, one human being may send a mail to another human being or a human being may receive a mail that was automatically dispatched or forwarded to a machine. Same is the case with telephony. But JMS is one such messaging system in which both on the sender side and receiver side, you are going to see two programs being running, two programs being present. So software components in a system can communicate with one another by using JMS. A program which behaves like a producer of a message sends the message to a data store. Where that message is held until the receiver receives it. The receiver then connects to that intermediate data store and receives the message. Here producer is one program and receiver is another program. Without human intervention, software components can interact with one another and thereby we can fully automate a messaging system. This messaging system or Java messaging services are mainly store and forward type services like our email services wherein when we send an email to our friend it doesn't directly go to our friend's computer. It, it, it first goes to a server, a mail server, which then stores that message in its data store. Then our friend connects to that server and gets the message from there. So in the middle there is always one kind of you know intermediate data store. That's what we call as store and forward. But this JMS messaging services are also based on that same concept of store and forward. Those intermediate data stores are provided to us by popularly available application servers. Until now, we have been using only a web server called Tomcat for deploying and running all our web applications. But now we will use an application server in order to implement this messaging over JMS because it is only an application server which can provide us the intermediate data stores and that application server which is the middleware is our JMS provider here. 
Now there are two types of destinations in JMS. Destination is nothing but the intermediate data store where messages are stored until they are consumed. So a producer sends a message to the destination. The message is stored at the destination until the consumer connects to the destination and takes the message from there. And those destinations are of two types, queue and topic. Queue is like point to point destination. Queue promotes point to point communication. Whereas topic supports publisher subscriber idiom which allows one message to be broadcasted to several receivers who have all subscribed to the topic. So this is based on publisher subscriber idiom. And here this is point to point system. Whereas, wherein one request is received by one consumer or one receiver. And after once a receiver consumes a message, the message will be taken out of the queue. That means one message can be consumed by one consumer for only once. This is called as you know reliable messaging system. And here again, the receiver can consume the message in two ways. One is in a synchronous way, the other is the asynchronous way. In a synchronous manner, the receiver asks the producer, requests the producer to send a message or uh, the receiver expects a message to be read from the queue, the queue is always there in the middle. Producer will not send any message directly to the receiver here. Queue is always there. That is why we call this as store and forward. Uh, the receiver expects a message to be present in the queue which was sent by the sender earlier. If the message does not appear in the queue or has not yet arrived in the queue, then the receiver blocks itself until the message arrives. We call that as a synchronous request. In an asynchronous manner, the receiver keeps on doing its normal duties until a message arrives at the queue. When a message arrives at the queue, it takes the message from the queue and consumes it. So the receiver does not block itself until the message arrives. Now topic, a sender sends a message to the topic. All those receivers who have subscribed to the topic will receive it. So it is something like a broadcast type you know, messaging. Now, in this case, however, all the receivers must have subscribed to the topic before the message was sent to the topic by the producer. Producer is nothing but something like a publisher here. So whoever have subscribed to the topic before the message was passed or message was posted to the topic will only receive it. If a subscriber subscribes to the topic at a later stage after the message was sent to the topic, then you know that subscriber will not see that message. Well, now let us try to understand these messaging services more elaborately through practical examples. Now, in order to 
develop the programs, the two programs in one application. One program behaves like producer, the other program behaves like consumer. And both of them need a destination to be present in the middle. And that destination may be a queue or a topic. In order to build those destinations and build the producer and consumer program, well, I needed JMS provider. Therefore, I downloaded JBoss application server called Wildfly server. Starting from version 8 onwards, JBoss is releasing its server with the name Wildfly. Unlike our Tomcat server, this server is an application server. So it not only supports HTTP protocol, but also supports other protocols like FTP, SMTP and provides us services like JMS provider, JMS destinations and it even contains EJB container. So all those Java EE enterprise applications which use JMS or EJBs, they need the support of an application server like Wildfly. Well, Wildfly is not the one and only one application server that is available. There are application servers like Oracle WebLogic, IBM WebSphere, Sun Microsystems, Glass, Fish, which are also available. But this Wildfly is a very famous web server used by many companies. This used to be called as JBoss application server in its versions which came prior to 8. Well, this Wildfly server is now in C drive. And I will show you how to start this server. And before beginning to develop JMS application, we have to manually configure one destination. And prior to that, we must create one user account. Well, I had detailed out all those steps that you have to take to create the user account and to create the destination in this document. Well, first, the configuration path shall be studied. Then we shall see how to build the applications. Well, each application contains two programs. One program which acts like a sender and another program which acts like a receiver. First, for the configuration part, you have to start the server from the command prompt. The commands which are shown here are perhaps uh, the commands that you have to run on Unix platform. Okay. But whereas we use Windows, right? So the commands that are required for starting the server and doing administrative activities on Windows have also been, you know, stated by me. Well, I will show you where they are. Otherwise, we will now replace these Unix commands with Windows commands as we go by. Okay. Um, to start the server, well, you have to run a file called standalone.bat. .sh is on Unix platform. .bat is the extension for a batch file that we use on Windows platform. Windows in sense DOS. Remember, DOS runs under Windows. In DOS, files having the extension .bat, well, they can be you know, treated as executable files. When you type the name of a batch file at the command from and press the enter key, the batch file starts running. So now I'll show you, there is a batch file provided to us, which is in the folder called bin. 
Yeah, I will take you into the uh, Wildfly installation folder. And here is the folder called bin. And in this folder called bin, there is a batch file standalone.bat. This file must be executed in order to start Wildfly server in a standalone environment. But we not only want to start Wildfly server, but we also want to configure destinations. So to support configuration, we have to tell Wildfly server to be ready for the configurations that we are about to make. The configurations that we make will affect a file called standalone-full.xml. This file can be found under the folder configuration, which is under the folder standalone, which in turn is under the root directory of Wildfly or Wildfly installation directory. So as you download Wildfly, it gets downloaded in the form of a zip file. You have to extract the contents and you would find this folder Wildfly 8.2.1.final that itself is its installation folder. Now, standalone-full.xml is an XML file which contains XML tags uh, that are related to the configurations of various destinations. It is now, it is similar to your web.xml. For every servlet that is present in your web application, you will write servlet tag and servlet mapping tag in web.xml, right? Similar to that, you have to write destination tags telling whether you want a queue to be created or a topic to be created. Now each tag that you write in standalone-full.xml will result in the creation of a queue or a topic. Now there are two ways of creating queue or a topic. Number one, open standalone-full.xml and write tags pertaining to your queue or topic directly in it. Option number two, use Wildfly's um, command line interface, pass commands, and then let the queue and topic be created. Well, option number two is more preferred than option number one. If at all you really want to open the standalone-full.xml and make changes to it, manually see here there are all tags somewhere you will find uh, a section that begins to declare all the destinations uh, which which are you know created and maintained on this server well you will have to find that appropriate tag right reach to it for example i earlier created one queue called Play Q. U -U -E -U -E. And here it is. The queue was called by me as Play Q. And here it here is the beginning of JMS destinations. Between JMS destinations and slash JMS destinations, well, you will have to make declarations of all the destinations that you want to create. And what is a destination? A destination is the middle data store which could be either a queue or a topic under jms destination if you want a queue to be created then write jms queue tag if you want a topic to be created then write jms topic tag for jms queue or jms topic the important attribute is name you have to give some name to the queue and then between jms queue and slash jms queue you will have to write entry tag and declare the JNDI name with which a lookup can be made and this queue can be found. Well, in JMS, we rely upon a special technology of Java which is called as JNDI. JN, JNDI stands for Java Naming Directory Interface. It is a naming system which allows us to give names to resources and then which also allows us 
or allows our applications to locate those resources by specifying the names. So JNDI provides that lookup service in the middle. So you create a resource, your resource may be an EJB resource, a JMS resource or a JDBC resource. You give some name to that resource and then you export that name to JNDI. Okay. So who will export the name of the resource to the JNDI sender? Then a receiver will then make a lookup for it. Now in this case, of course, the JMS provider will declare a name for the JMS resource and export it to JNDI. The sender program will look, make a lookup and find it out. And even the receiver program also will make a lookup and find it out. For both sender and receiver, the destination is in the middle. And who is responsible for managing the destination? The JMS provider. And uh, our JMS provider is the Wildfly server here. So this entry tag declares the JNDI name with which this resource will be identified and you know its reference will be obtained. And according to JNDI naming conventions, if your resource is a JMS resource, then in its JNDI name that should appear Java colon slash JMS as the prefix. Java colon slash EJB is the prefix that we give to EJB resource. Or if it is a JDBC resource, we say Java colon slash JDBC. So there are some standard conventions that must be followed while giving names. Now here, if it is a queue that you want to configure, then in the name that you give to the queue, well, the prefix that must appear is java colon jboss slash exported slash jms well, this entry is there by default this is one of the entries that belongs to wildfly server this is not made by us so don't disturb this entry from this point onwards it is our configuration jms queue there is already one jms queue which is by default configured and even this expiry queue is also configured earlier it is there by default. And in case of the JNDI names that were given to the default queues, you find prefix simply as Java colon JMS. But in case of the JNDI names that we have to give to our queues uh, or our topics, well, the prefix must be Java colon JBoss slash exported slash JMS. Why? Because we want this JNDI name to be exported to a registry, JNDI registry, which will be automatically created. And well, both sender program and receiver program will go to that registry, make a lookup and find out our QR topic. Okay. Therefore, the prefix must be Java colon JBoss slash exported slash JMS. Then what follows is either Q or topic. Okay, if you want to configure a queue, write queue, or if you want to configure a topic, write topic there. Then what follows is the logical JNDI name that you want to give to your queue or topic. This is some name chosen by you. Okay, you can choose any name and give it. Right. And so here is one example of JMS queue configuration, one another example of JMS topic configuration. Well, frankly speaking, I did not make these configurations by writing the stacks directly in this file. One can, of course, directly modify this file, but it is not safe to modify this file. Any accidental alternations that are done to other tags might severely affect the JBoss server, and JBoss server may not start and run at all. Therefore, the safest way of making these entries into this file is by using command line interface. Now I will show you how by using command line interface, you can configure a queue or a topic. So I am just closing down this file. But remember, 
from the command line interface a topic or a queue which you had configured will appear in standalone dash full dot xml yes now first we will start the wildfly server and at the time of starting it we will pass standalone dash full dot xml file name as argument to it so that wildfly server not only starts but also gets ready for the configuration and yes now to start the server i will go to the dos command prompt cd backslash yes this is the wildfly server installation folder i will go to the bin directory and there you have to type the command like this stand alone stand alone dot bat space minus c minus c that switch is for making configurations minus c and space and the configuration file stand alone dash full dot xml this is the command that we give in windows environment to start the standalone wildfly server and also make it ready for configuration in future if you don't want any configurations to be made after the server is started well you can simply type standalone dot bat and press enter so that the server simply starts up okay. yes so i press enter key server is running remember you must create environment variables like jbas underscore home java underscore home before you know executing this command yes now it says final tweak starting it shows several messages and after once the server starts well, these these messages stop coming and the lastly seen message would be final tweet started in so and so milliseconds so now the wild fly server is up and running you have to minimize this console you must not close it while configurations are being made well now i will show you the steps that you have to take further first you have to create one user account by specifying a user id and password the jms is a secure messaging system second you have to configure a topic or a queue so if you had not already created a user you must create the user account right now to create the user account the steps to be followed are like this you have to start a new console and at that time your server must be up and running okay start a new command prompt window new console Server's console is already running. I have minimized it and kept it aside. Now, cd wildfly cd wildfly cd bin. All commands work from this bin folder. Then the command that you have to give here is uh, add dash user dot bat so there is a batch file called add user dot bat this is in the bin folder and in unix environment it would be add user dot sh the shell script in windows dos environment it would be dot bat now the moment you press enter well it asks you what type of user you want to create 
management user or application user. Management users are those who will administer JBoss server. Now, application users are those who will develop applications, deploy them on JBoss server, and use them. Well, we belong to the second category, application user category. Therefore, enter B. Next, enter the details of the new user to add. Now, we are going to add a new user. Uh, we will specify username to be user x so there is no user with this name user x next the password the password recommendations are given here it should not be one of the following restricted values they say root cannot be used as a password admin administrator cannot be used as passwords and password should contain at least eight characters there should be one alphabetic character one digit and one non alpha numeric symbol the password must be different from username so here i'll specify the password as my jdk 1.7 again my jdk 1.7 yes now user account has been created now it asks you to tell what groups do you want this user to belong to well you, you may specify the or you may simply enter blank there by pressing the enter key to specify a group or you may specify the group name as guest okay well guest user we will specify the user account as guest user there are several groups that can be maintained well, these maintenance of the group actually comes under the purview of the administrator. Okay, for the time being, we will create this as guest. Okay. Next, about to add user user X for real application real. It says, is this correct? It asks you to tell yes or no. Say yes. Okay. So there are all detailed steps given in the document. I'll give this. I'll give that document to you. Right. So looking at these steps, when you create a user account, at the time you rebuild this application at your home. Next, after specifying yes there, uh, well, what is the next question that is being asked? For a slave host controller, uh, or is this new user going to be used for one application server process to connect to another application server process? So is interaction between one process to the other is required then simply say no because we are not going to impart any server to server communication here all the communication is going to happen within a server within the server there are going to be queue topic tender connects to the queue receiver also connects to the same queue so cross server we don't want any communication to be carried out so simply say no and yes, the user account has been created and says press any key to continue and the command prompt returns. So that is how you have to create a user account. Well, that is one part of it. All is not yet over. You have to now configure a queue or a topic. A queue or a topic can be configured by adding it queue tag or topic tag by directly opening standalone dash full dot xml file but as i said earlier that is not a safe way of creating a queue or a topic what is the safest way use the command line interface okay. and the command line interface allows you to create a queue or a topic it also allows you to remove a queue or a topic well through command, when you configure a queue or a topic, the corresponding queue tag or topic tag automatically get added to standalone dash full dot XML. Well, how do we do it? Now, for that, you have to take a new command prompt window. Remember, while you are doing all these things, like creating a user, configuring a queue or a topic, your server must have been running. Okay, our server is running 
through a separate command prompt window. Okay, you must not close down this window. You must keep it minimized. Always. Okay, now to create a or to start the command line interface for configuring a QR a topic, the command that you have to type is jboss icon cli dot vat. Strictly speaking, it is not required to mention the extension dot vat. JBoss dash CLI would be enough for any batch file. In order to run it, it is enough if you simply type its name and press the enter key. But oh, oh, batch files act as commands. Well, to give you maximum clarity and to explain in a clear manner, I have been typing even the extensions too. Well, now as you type JBoss dash CLI dot bat, you say you are disconnected at the moment. Type connect to connect to the command line interface. So type CO and then -E CT connect. And thereby you are now connected. Remember, JBoss server you know receives administrative commands uh, at the port 9990. Well, the HTTP web port which it uses is also 8080 like Tomcat server. That is for receiving HTTP requests and sending HTTP responses. But for receiving administrative commands, see we are now in the process of administering something, right? Well, the port is 9990. This is the default port used by uh, JBoss server, which is nowadays called as Wildfly server. Okay. Now, to add a queue to your server, the command that you have to type is like this. JMS hyphen Q because you want to add a Q. JMS hyphen Q space add space minus minus Q hyphen address is equal to the, the Q name that you want to give to your Q. Okay. Uh, may I call this as special Q special Q hyphen hyphen. entries is equal to so here you specified name for the queue and here you are specifying the jndi entry the jndi name that you want to give to the queue and export it to the jndi registry well you are not responsible for creating jndi registry it will be automatically created jndi is one of the services provided by every application server a web server like tomcat does not provide such services now minus minus entries is equal to java colon jboss slash exported slash jms slash q well this must be the prefix for configuring any q same prefix slash then comes your q name spcial this q name must be the same name which you had declared for the q earlier that's all this command will will cause a JMS hyphen Q tag to be added to the JMS hyphen destinations area in standalone dash full dot XML file. So this is how we can create a queue. Well, please be informed that this process of you know creating a application user or creating a queue or a topic on an application server differs from one application server to the other. Whatever all you are learning now is with respect to JBoss. In Oracle WebLogic server, well, the uh, system is a little bit different, but it is easier to manage. Why? Because in JBoss server only, you don't find you know graphical user interface being given for the management console. But whereas in other bigger application servers like Oracle WebLogic or IBM WebSphere, well, there are GUI driven management consoles wherein you have to simply click buttons, you know, fill up, you know, text boxes to create users and to create uh, these queues and topics. Okay. Well, this JBoss is very, very popular in the industry. That is why I have chosen JBoss. Easier to download and easier to manage too. Uh, application servers like Oracle WebLogic, which come with workshop and, you know, 
graphical user interface driven management console are quite heavier to download the application server size itself is somewhere around 1 gb so it takes long time for download and you know installation is also a little bit complex process um jboss server on the other hand can be easily downloaded and easily you know installed there is no installation at all simply copy paste type and jboss can also withstand any amount of loads like you know oracle web logic server yes now you copy this command and then you paste it at the command prompt window so we must have connected already here yeah. edit paste and press the enter key yes the queue is created if you now go to the you know file system open standalone dash full dot xml and in the jms dash destinations area you will find this queue special queue being added there okay so similar similar to this process i created a queue called play queue and i created one user cgi the user's name was cgi a, here we created a user with the name as user x right earlier i created a user called cgi and a password the same password i think my jdk 1.7 was set well we are now done with all we need to do next is you know develop jms application that has a sender and a receiver in it run the applications and check the output well i am going to demonstrate that process of developing the application in my next recording